Welcome to the Regulating AI podcast with Sanjay Puri. AI is changing the world faster than rules can keep up. So how do we protect people without killing progress? Each week, Sanjay brings you inside conversations with global leaders, policymakers, and innovators who are wrestling with that exact question. So if you're curious about the future of technology and how it's governed, you're in the right place. Today on the Regulating AI podcast, we're thrilled to welcome Armenia's Minister of Finance. As an economist, he climbed the ranks from bank accounting to high finance, honed his chops as a public finance expert for the Asian Development Bank and in December 2022 took the helm of Armenia's fiscal policy. He now leads Armenia through a pivotal era of economic transformation, straddling digital ambitions, security pressures, and the ever-evolving AI frontier. Welcome to the Regulating AI podcast. We have a real special guest with us today. We have the Minister of Finance from Armenia, who's here for the World Bank IMF meetings. The head of the IMF said, artificial intelligence could have a huge impact in terms of the economy, etc. So we want to have that conversation, but many other things, because people who are our listeners will be surprised by what they hear from the minister. Minister, we have a global audience. These are folks who are venture capitalists, policy leaders. These are entrepreneurs, building companies, and they are global. So firstly, welcome to the Regulating AI podcast. It's such a pleasure to have you. Please tell our listeners about Armenia, about yourself, Minister. Thank you, and thanks for uh, this invitation. It's really an honor to be your guest and uh, to have this great audience. Yeah, Armenia is in South Caucasus, for those who does not mean, uh, does not know about that. Uh, We have been part of Soviet Union and have been uh, one of the technological centers of Soviet Union. In fact, uh, in 80s, 3% of our population have been engineers and uh, some big part of the high tech industry of Soviet have been located in Armenia. Unfortunately, in 90s, we have lost uh, some of that capacity, but now we are uh, regaining our natural strength in that. And we have a vibrant ecosystem, uh, technological ecosystem. And uh, with the AI development in the recent years, uh, we have been happy that we have announced a very big uh, AI factory uh, investment program with NVIDIA. And uh, we are working towards that. Uh, We hope uh, to uh, start it soon. Well, you got a lot going on for a country that is small, for our listeners, what is the AI factory? Just uh, just to give them an idea, it's uh, NVIDIA. Is it a data center that is being set up, uh, Minister? Yes, this is a big data center, which will have a huge capacity for uh, data processing mm-hmm. for the region, mm-hmm. uh, where there is uh, lots of technological development also in the region. Mm-hmm. Why is Armenia also attractive for that? Because, as I said, we have a very good talent in this area and there is a need also for energy and because Armenia is a, a, a exporter of the energy we have more energy than we need so there opens up uh, opportunities for creation of this type of data center which are energy intensive so Armenia for our listeners has talent it has energy as we know for AI those are two huge components Minister, we were talking before, you said com- large companies also have R&D facilities in Armenia. And for listeners who are looking at some R&D facilities, what kind of companies would be welcome to set up R&D facilities, you know, given what's already there, the talent that exists? Yeah, uh, for for many years, we have been uh, very successful in chip design. Uh, for example, a very famous company, uh, Synopsys, have uh, their R&D uh, center in Armenia for many years now. And uh, after Russia-Ukraine war, many technological companies which were located in Moscow, mm-hmm. they decided to move uh, their offices to Armenia. Mm-hmm. This will 
not only include US-based companies like NVIDIA R&D Center, which is now located in Armenia, but also Russian tech companies like Yandex. Mm-hmm. They are also mo- have moved their uh, R&D centers to, uh, to Armenia. And of course, I'm, I'm more a financial guy, but I think the main reason is that they know there is an existing ecosystem. Mm-hmm. It's good to live in our country uh, with healthy environment. And from this perspective, this is also a very good area where uh, technological uh, giants are interested in to work with our country. So a lot of interest in there. You mentioned you're a finance person, so we'll talk a little bit about the, from your portfolio perspective. The IMF president said that artificial intelligence, the investments, etc., could have an impact on the economy because there's trillions of dollars that is being invested. And on the other hand, there are some job losses we can see, at least in the United States, that are happening because of AI will automate some of those functions, whether it is call centers or even programming and things of that nature. What is your view in terms of AI's role in the economy when you look at Armenia? Obviously, you know, U.S., or, you know, there's massive investments. Do you think it is a bubble? A lot of people say, hey, you know, because of the dot-com bubble, let's just be careful. You are the finance expert, and tell our listeners, I mean, what is your perspective on this? I don't think this is a bubble. I don't. I think this is a really a big change, and I think that uh, the, the big change have not yet happened, so we are starting the process, and I think that uh, AI will advance in the future in which more uh, progressive way. I think that AI will replace some of the people and will challenge human beings. So we spend more time and attention to our personal development because there is a big competition. Will be big competition on the intellectual uh, work. But from the other point of view, there will be a very big efficiency gains. We'll spend less time to do in Ministry of Finance doing analytical work and provide the services to our uh, citizens, which will decrease the cost and increase the effectiveness. And this will create additional space for investing in education and all other areas which are important strategically, including some of those which are needed to understand uh, in this new reality what are the areas. I think this is mostly education uh, where we can uh, spend and have innovative uh, programs so that our labor force is more involved in creative areas rather than technical areas, which will be replaced replaced by AI. So you heard the minister say that he doesn't think it's a bubble. There will be some displacement or maybe replacement or transformation of people, but it'll free up people to do more strategic things, more fun things. Like I always wanted to learn how to play drums. Maybe I'll get a chance to do that. But that's a pretty good perspective. Minister, within your ministry, are you using AI? We are now uh, starting uh, to have strategies on which areas will pilot in the ministry. And that was one of the topics I was talking in uh, meetings with IMF that we would like to more hear about uh, uh, other countries' uh, experience. But we are using AI in our tax uh, Mm. And we see that this uh, provides uh, lots of uh, uh, important inputs for our data analysis. Mm -hmm. And uh, this uh, reduces uh, time and increases the accuracy of of audit work that our tax office is doing and we will be we will be investing more in this type of tools and i hope that if uh, when i come next time uh, next time to here uh, i will also tell that uh, about our uh, successful pilots within the ministry particularly there are two areas that uh, i think we can uh, go uh, straight forward it is a treasury function mm-hmm. and this is procurement function and uh, you probably heard that um, uh, there is a procurement minister, uh, which is AI in Europe. 
Yes, we heard that. So that's good to hear that it's uh, you're doing uh, implementing it with taxes, and then you've got some pilots that are coming in from procurement and other standpoint. Do you think AI will improve the interactions with citizens, make it more efficient in terms of public delivery of services, whether it is tax filing, it is their issues, et cetera? Do you think AI can play a big role in that, Minister? Yes, I think uh, AI can help there a lot. So lots of people in their interaction, from one point of view, they want this human relationship. From the other point of view, they don't want this human <laughs> relationship because they say, I don't want to deal with anybody, just solve my problem. Yep. It will take time until AI will be able to accurately solve the problems. So I think we should find the right balance mm -hmm. on how the how we are using AI in which areas where the algorithms are clear. Mm -hmm. And of course, to keep in the uh, connecting points human touch, mm -hmm. so there is a human judgment and we see uh, that we do not lose in our relationships, doesn't matter personal or with the government, this human uh, connection. Yeah. In terms of, uh, Minister, you are dealing on the tax side on a lot of people, data and other stuff. Are there kind of any governance or any kind of structures that are that either have been set up or you're thinking of setting up to make sure, you know, because sometimes AI can hallucinate, AI can maybe, you know, there could be loss of privacy and things of that nature. Uh, in recent years, we have created uh, one agency which is dealing with digitalization. Of course, we have a, also a high-tech ministry mm -hmm. and we are now in the process of creating another one which, which will be more dealing with uh, cybersecurity. There is no particular agency which is dealing with AI, but I think in upcoming future, we will be discussing which of the agencies can also do this work. You know, in government systems, uh, some things uh, take slowly, but, they, uh, but when they take off, uh, they go fast. I'm not that afraid that we are far behind. No, you are not. You're not. Minister, for our audience, uh, what would be something that you would want to leave behind as a action item or something as they are listening to you right now, whether they are in the U.S., they are in Europe, in Asia, etc., about Armenia, about opportunities in Armenia, if you can tell our audience a little bit. One of the key events which happened recently is the signature of the peace uh, with uh, Azerbaijan which happened in Washington, and there is an agreement uh, signed also with United States where we set the cooperation in the areas of power and uh, technology, AI, and some uh, cross-border infrastructure. So uh, this creates uh, lots of interest towards uh, our country where we are thinking to become an integral part of the middle corridor, and we uh, presented our a project of Crossroads of Peace. And I think from this all technological developments and uh, the innovative policies that we have, Armenia is an interesting place on the map to explore, to visit, and to see if you find that the talented people which I'm mentioning are there and how the, if there is a cooperation uh, perspective. Well, I think there is some amazing opportunities. If the Minister of Finance can talk about AI and technology so fluently, I have a feeling the citizens uh, there must be uh, very capable too. So for our audience, I think this is an, a unique opportunity where you see NVIDIA setting up an AI factory, a lot of R&D uh, being done, bright technological uh, workforce, talented people, and Armenia is situated right there. And I think you have a government that is really pro-technology. So I really thank you so much, uh, Minister. Thank you for taking the time and really look forward, as you said, when you come next, maybe your pilots would have been done 
Maybe there will be some other AI factories that have been set up, but it will be a real pleasure. And thank you for taking the time. Thank you very much. And I hope that uh, my speech inspired, inspired you to uh, to have uh, our next meeting in, in Yerevan, not here. Absolutely. <laughs> we look forward to that. Absolutely look forward. Thank you so much, Minister. Thank you. Too. Thank you. Thanks for tuning in to the Regulating AI podcast with Sanjay Puri. If you enjoyed today's conversation, don't forget to leave a comment. We'd love to hear what you thought. Share it with someone curious about the future of AI and join us next time for more stories and insights from the leaders shaping what's ahead. Right here on the Regulating AI podcast.